feels like 2021 was a big year. I know we've been writing a lot about it for employment data. Maybe you can set the context, the table for us about what's going on. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, it's a really exciting time to be working in employment and payroll data. There is a lot changing. Um, and, you know, I think the, the context on why this has become so interesting probably starts with COVID, mm-hmm. um, you know, and uh, with so many people losing their jobs during the pandemic, so many people changing jobs post pandemic, um, it's never been more important uh, to be able to access income and employment data, right? And so this has become, um, you know, it's become top of mind for for a lot of folks in financial services. Um, so I think that's sort of, that's the macro context. I think from a micro context, um, at the same time, verifications uh, or verification of income and employment is becoming more and more expensive, you know, and lenders or financial institutions are entering the world of automation and right are entering the world of, um, you know, entirely digital experiences. And so um, there's been a move away from, you know, traditional income and employment, um, uh, uh, you know, access measures like pay stubs, like call centers. Um, So, you know, I think those are a couple of reasons. And then, you know, the third one I'd highlight is, just trends in privacy, you know, uh, legislation like GDPR, CCPA, um, you know, data ownership rights. We've seen this play out in um, banking aggregation, right? And so that that has created a really interesting trend in terms of uh, consumer access for employment records. Right. So you've got these sort of three different things going on now. What what, what role do you see employment data playing in financial services? You know, looking out into the future, like where are we headed? Yeah. You know. I'm biased, but I would argue that, you know, employment data is, uh, you know, it's the most core element of an individual's financial identity. Um, you know, I put it above a credit score. I put it above banking data. I put it, you know, above sort of these other data elements. You know, when I meet you at a party, you ask me what I do, right? I'm going to tell you where I work and I'm going to tell you how long I've worked there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I think, um, you know, access to these, um, you know, to these systems, to employment data is going to unlock an entirely new set of, um, you know, products, features, customizations that businesses can offer consumers, you know, at at a very basic level data, you know, breeds customization, right. It breeds, um, you know, personalized offerings. And so um, we see this powering um, an entirely new set of financial products and services that, you know, is for a large part have been stock in many ways, historically, um, you know, the, the last thing I'd say on this is there's a changing nature of work, right? And people are making their money in more and different ways. And I think, you know, gig economy, Uber, Lyft, et cetera, spearheaded this over the last decade, but it's, it's proliferating rapidly, you know, and when you think about, um, you know, my peers, how they're making money now, it's not just W2, it's not just, um, you know, it's not just traditional income, right? It's, um, you know, people are making money on Airbnb. Uh, you talked about the creator economy, right? And so um, keeping up with all the disparate ways that folks are starting to earn income means that there needs to be a change in terms of how we think about, um, you know, aggregating, gathering uh, income data. I like that. And um, my dream job is to become an influencer. I don't know. I see my kids <laughs> watch these, these people. I think that's a great job, great way to make money. Um, How, you know, we've spoken a few times throughout this year to to various people at Argyle. How has, how has the product evolved over time? Yeah. Um, It's been really exciting to be at Argyle. Um, uh, We started the pandemic with, uh, with about 15 people. We're up to about 110. So the reception from the market has been super positive. Uh, We're scaling extremely rapidly. Um, You know, I think um, the, the core thing that we've focused on is making it easy for anybody, regardless of where they earn income from, to verify their income and employment. So, you know, someday in the future, Zach, you may be a you may be a TikTok influencer, or you may be running a business on Shopify, right? And now, today, with Argal, you can verify your income and employment if you make your money on those sources. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it's it's a it's a large problem, right? Again, we've talked about these disparate employment sources. There are 250,000 payroll processors in the United States. Um, it's not easy to be able to verify income and employment from all of those different sources, but that's that's the journey that we're on. Um, you know, we long, long time ago, you know, we only covered a couple of platforms. Um, today, 
Uh, we cover hundreds of thousands of employers. We cover north of 100 million uh, Americans, meaning um, over 100 million Americans can verify their income and employment using Argyle. So is that part of the challenge over time to not only expand coverage, but also to cover new sources of income as, as they be- become accessible? Yeah, you know, we have to keep up with the market uh, and the market is changing quickly. Um, you know, and, and all of those ones that I just mentioned, right, are, are income sources that have largely come on the map in the last five, seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to proliferate more rapidly going forward. Um, and, you know, those those income sources aren't going to be, you know, W-2s. They're going to be new, innovative, interesting ways for people to make their money. And, and Argyle needs to keep up with that market because, you know, that's what our customers are going to demand from us, right? If, if um, you know, lenders need to verify income and employment from an individual who's now making money on TikTok, uh, right? We need to we need to be able to support that. The, um, you know, I'd say the, the, the other uh, product expansion that I'd highlight is, you know, there there are there are a number of ways to verify income and employment. Um, you know, Argyle, um, our our bread and butter is what we'll call credential based access. Um, but there's other ways to do it, right? There's uploading a pay stub or uploading a W two. There's um, calling your employer and saying, "Hey, does Zach really work?" You know, here at Tearsheet. Um, there are proposed data sets, which, um, you know, the, the credit bureaus really focus on, um, and Argyle, you know, wants to be an all encompassing solution, regardless of, you know, how you want to verify your income and employment. And so, um, we're actually, you know, we're making expansions in that vein. So, um, not only today, can you verify your income and employment with credential based access, but, um, you can do that uploading a pay stub or uploading a document and Argyle can process that for you. Um, and over the long run, we want to be able to support any sort of income and employment verification, regardless of the type. Uh, and we provide orchestration and tooling for our clients to be able to do that. Great. And, and Billy, one of the things you mentioned is sort of this lending use case. I, I'm kind of curious what you're seeing your clients do with the data across the board um, and maybe some new use cases that uh, that maybe you hadn't expected. Yeah, it's fun. Um, you know, people come to us every day with new interesting use cases you can imagine you know as you make this data set programmatically available the market is far more creative than we ever could have been you know especially when we when we conceived of our business so um you know i think the 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 most interesting use case here the one that we focused on predominantly is verification of income and employment Mm -hmm. um that that uh that exists in multiple markets the the um the one of the markets that, that we spend a lot of time in is lending. So this can be personal lending, you know, auto loans, mortgage loans. Um, you know, and, and if you think about a lender, verification of income and employment, um, it can be a check the box function. You know, it can say, you know, we want to give Zach this mortgage. We need to make sure he works for Tearsheet. Great. Let's check the box that Zach actually works there and makes as much as he says he is. And I, I'd call that, um, I'd call that V1.0 of, of digesting employment data. What we're now seeing lenders start to do now that they have access to a programmatic data feed uh, within an employment account, they uh, they can actually use income and employment data for more purposes. Sorry, did something happen? Did I freeze? Can you hear me? I hear you. Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it, I'll, I'll step back um, a few seconds there. So, you know, V1.0 is just using this data to verify income and employment, right? Does that work here? But what we're seeing with lenders is they're now starting to say, great, I have access to a programmatic data feed of income and employment information. Now I can actually start to use this data, you know, and incorporate it into my underwriting algorithms. Um, and, you know, in many cases, this can do things like eliminate the need for a credit score in underwriting. Um, you know, the most innovative lenders that we work with are actually finding that looking at things like tenure is more predictive of ability to repay than uh, looking at a credit score. Interesting. Um, Can you hear me okay? Yeah, no, you keep coming through. It looks like Zoom is a little bit... um... It's wonky right now, but uh, you, I can hear you perfectly, and and your right. and your video is actually live. So perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just to finish that thought, so um, you know, 
somebody's ability to repay a loan is a function of how, you know, how reliable are they? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what better way, I I even use this in my own hiring decisions when we decide to bring in, you know, somebody on a team, like is is somebody reliable, right? I'll give you two candidate profiles, somebody who's moved jobs every six months for the last four years, somebody who has, you know, stayed at their job every and moved every four years, you know, over the last, you know, decade, Um, right? So tenure is a function of reliability and our lenders are starting to see this. So they're starting to incorporate things like hire date into their underwriting models, so, you know, that, that's just, that's a small bucket of, of how employment data is starting to change in industry like lending. We're also, you know, opening up completely new use cases that just didn't exist before. So, you know, I'll give you an example, earned wage access, right? If you can see when somebody completes a shift, then you can lend on that information, right? It's data coming straight from the payroll system. Um, another example is... Um, We've, we've talked about everything that we've been describing is read access to the payroll systems, you know, so reading income and employment data. Um, but this programmatic access also allows for write access. So changing things within the payroll system. Uh, and this is most interesting in a couple of use cases. One is what we call paycheck linked lending. So you can actually fund a loan directly from uh the payroll system, right? So you add a pay allocation that says, you know, 3295 is going to go to this lender to repay the loan. And it lowers the risk by allowing the lender to move upstream, you know, instead of pulling funds from a bank account, right? They're moving to the payroll system and this can, uh, this can dramatically reduce risk. So we've seen lenders who use this as a repayment option can actually reduce APR by three, four X. So those are, those are a couple of cases of, those are a couple of things that, uh, that uh, customers are are, um, building on top of our, on top of our API. Awesome. And uh, sorry for the wonkiness. It feels like that might be a little bit distracting, but I, it, you're coming through great. Um, great. Mike, Michael asked a question from the audience. Says, great product. You said there are 250,000 payroll processors and Argyle is covering 100 million Americans. So that's about 30% with credential-based process. 100% doesn't seem reasonable. What percent coverage of Americans does seem feasible? Did you hear what I said? Can you try it? Can you, you cut out at the end there? Can you give me the um, uh, one more time then and part of that question? So I guess what percentage of coverage of Americans does seem feasible for Argyle? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, there's always going to be a portion of Americans that don't, um, you know, don't log in anywhere to look at their pay slip, right? They're paid in cash, they're paid in checks. So we estimate that the portion of the market that actually will never be addressable by Argyle is somewhere in the 10% range. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so we're at 70% today. Our goal is to get to 100%. It's a good point on that's that's an unachievable goal uh, in some ways, at least with this credential-based access. Um, so we're hoping to get to um, somewhere in that 90% range over the next 12 months or so. Got it. Um, and as you started talking about moving beyond um, verification into into actually credit models, you get a feel for some of the innovation that's happening around employment data. How is employment data enabling innovation and, and broader access? Yeah, um, it's a good question. So, um, you know, I think... Um, Let's just take an example, right? Um, a lender uh, wants to provide a loan for an Uber driver. Um, that lender is mostly relying on a credit score today, which, as we've talked about, isn't that predictive of ability to repay. And so, if a lender wants to underwrite on, you know, that individual's income, how does that person who drives for Uber verify their income and employment? They can, they can send a 1099 from last year, which is pretty outdated information. They can screenshot information from within their Uber account. Not that feasible from both a consumer, pers- from both a borrower perspective and a lender perspective, um, right? And so now we're providing a way for that individual to verify their income and employment information. So uh, what we're seeing with our lenders is they're actually opening up completely new markets that they weren't able to tap before, just because it was, they're mostly operating in a black box for those markets. Um, you know, some of my some of my favorite implementations of Argyle as well are, um, you know, a lender uh, a lender may 
um, you know, they may deny an applicant or, you know, somebody may be on the fringe of whether they're able to accept them or not. And, um, you know, then they'll put Argyle in front of that borrower and say, hey, if you can verify your income and employment, then we can actually change this credit decision. So, right, by bringing income and employment information to the table, you're actually able to approve borrowers who you wouldn't otherwise have been able to with traditional um, data sources. Got it. Um, and another thing I, we've certainly seen, and I'm, I'm sure you guys are feeling it, is um, new providers, new players moving into the space, either horizontal, horizontally or they're just they're sort of de novo. Um, how, do, how would you recommend a buyer of employment data um, differentiate between the different suppliers of it? Yeah. So, um, you know, there are various ways to access employment data. Um, and the truth is, um, and I, I say this up here as the founder of Argyle, there's no such thing as a silver bullet. You know, there are, um, there are reposed data sets. Um, there are, you know, pay stub uploads and processing those pay stubs. There are call centers to call employers. And now, you know, Argyle has brought a new model to the market of credential-based access. Um, and these are all tools in the tool chest. Some are better, you know, on some dimensions, some are better on other dimensions. It, it depends on, you know, your preference for cost, speed of data, the data granularity that you actually need. Um, why lenders come to us uh, is for a few reasons. Um, you know, one, the real-time nature of the data, right? So the data is accurate, you know, to within an hour of what's actually within someone's payroll system. Um, the second reason is um, an ongoing data feed. So, you know, you might um, you might underwrite that individual or verify that individual, and then you can also continue to you know digest this information um, during the servicing of the loan, or let's say during you know uh, perhaps a week or few months long origination process. Um, third reason: coverage, right? So um, you know, again, no one size fits all. Um, we can help support about seventy percent of the market, um, and, and um, that's pretty compelling from a um, you know competitive standpoint. And the last one is cost, right? Um, um, some of these things are expensive, right? Even just from a unit cost standpoint or from an operational overhead. And so, um, you know, if, these are a few dimensions that I'd recommend uh, thinking about, you know, how to stitch together different providers on. Got it. And, you know, today um, is all about embedded finance and um, obviously our guy is an embedded solution. So what's the benefit of, of embedding employment data as a solution like that, as opposed to going out and, and piecemealing it together from other sources? Yeah, you know, I think this is about uh, your relationship with your user, you know, and I think um, I think what Argyle allows you to do is very transparently show what information you're collecting from the individual. Um, I think, you know, in, in, in today's world, that is sort of required to build trust with your consumers, right? And um, I think we're very proud of the consumer permissioned consumer centric solution that we've built, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, lenders that align with that philosophy like to embed us in their solution because it's a very transparent way of digesting employment data. Um, so, and, and, you know, it's just, we think a lot about user experience. We think a lot about conversion. We think a lot about what creates, you know, beautiful customer experiences and, and having, you know, an embedded solution like this is, is one mechanism to do that. It's, you know, it's sort of ugly. I, I got a loan recently, right. And, um, for a, uh, for a mortgage and, um, I needed to upload three pay stubs. Um, they needed to email me, uh, and loop in our CEO to say, Hey, does Billy actually work at Argyle? Right. And, and that's not, it's not a great user experience. It, it wasn't, it wasn't the most pleasant thing. Um, it makes for a good story and I'm, I'm glad I get to talk about it here, but for the average consumer, I, I, that's probably not how they want to go about things. Uh, it'd be much more simple, you know, to just provide my credentials, have that data feed going along uh, and not need to worry about it. Uh, we did have a question come from Michael in the audience. Um, how does the cost compare to pulling a bureau and score per borrower? Yeah. Um, much less. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I think the, um, we are, we're able to offer the, the our solution at, at a much more, um, you know, cost effective, uh, mechanism. And that's because it's built on consumer consent. So, um, uh, you know, that, that, that creates, um, that creates great unit economics for our lenders and, and is one of the, you know, compelling reasons why they switch to us. Got it. Um, I'm, I'm interested, Billy, in understanding sort of where we are in, uh, from a distribution point of view, from Argyle's distribution point of view, um, 
are, are, is it still a, is it a push or a pull when you're talking to new customers? Do, do customers, are they looking for this type of solution or, or sometimes, I guess, where are we in, in terms of the awareness of this type of solution? Yeah. Um, you know, I had a, I had a, I had a, um, a customer recently say to me, you know, I felt like I had a gun to my head when it came to income and employment information. And I didn't realize that there was something that could help me swat it away. So I think that's actually a really nice summation of the market. I think people know that accessing income and employment information is difficult. It's expensive. It causes a lot of friction for their consumers. There just haven't been any alternatives for a long time other than those few that I've mentioned. Um, so I would say very well known that this is a problem. Um, I think we're in early the early innings of people realizing that you know this um, the solution that Argyle is bringing to market is in um, you know is a compelling alternative. Um, I'm also curious about the growth. You mentioned the the growth since uh, Corona hit. Um, wh where are you hiring for? What what kind of skill sets? What kind of roles? Where's the growth come in the headcount? I, I will give the I will give the the obvious one of everywhere. Um, so regardless of your skill set, if you are excited by what we're working on, um, please come and talk to us. We are hiring across um, sales, engineering, uh, customer success, marketing, um, design. Um, but you know, I think um, if again, if 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 you're excited by the solution, and um, you know, we uh, I'm sure we can find a place for you within Argyle. So feel free to reach out. My email uh, is Billy at Argyle.com. Awesome, and uh, that's Billy with a Y. Um, are there any regulatory issues around consumer permission data that comes from Michael again in the audience? Yeah, um, you know, so uh, we operate firmly um, as a data transfer agent outlined in um, legislation in both, um, you know, CCPA, GDPR, Dodd-Frank, um, right? Our, our entire mission has been, um, you know, and, and I hate for this to sound to cliche, cliche, but democratizing access to employment data. You know, this is really about, we believe this is an incredibly, um, you know, incredibly valuable data set. Consumers deserve to have access to it and transfer it. Um, and Argyle is a, um, you know, Argyle is, is that transfer agent that allows them to do that. Um, and, you know, we, we feel strongly in our beliefs of, uh, of consumer consent, of, of consumer transparency. That's awesome. And um, I guess let's shift the, the look to, towards the future. Where are you headed with the product? Where are you taking it? Yeah. Um, so, you know, continuing to hit on similar themes that that we've been hitting um, coverage, right? Um, keeping up with the market, keeping up with the um, disparate ways that people are making money, right? So we, we will continue to um, uh, make sure that anyone, regardless of where they make their money, can verify their income and employment. Uh, we really we we don't believe that that should be a privilege. We believe that should be a right, and our house the 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 you know the the way that that should happen. Um, you know, and then as I mentioned, um, continuing to make it easy um, uh, to build. We're, we're we're building a lot of exciting tooling for lenders to manage these various ways to verify income and employment. As I mentioned, whether it's you know uploading a document, whether it's a call center, um, whether it's a, a permissionless um, uh, you know. Um, access to employment data, um, you know, making it easy for lenders to stitch together the various solutions that exist in the market to, um, you know, to automate this. It's a, uh, it's, it's a hard problem. It's, um, uh, it's not simple, but you know, it's, it, it gets us up in the morning and, and we're, we're excited by what we're building. Yeah. It's been really incredible watching you guys grow. Billy, always great talking to you and thanks for joining us at the big bank theory conference. Yeah. Thanks for having us, Zach. Really appreciate it.